Hey there friends, it's Keek, and this is my day in the life as a PhD student. I'll take you behind the scenes of a Saturday in the microscope room. It's a cozy, chill vibe, so grab your coffee and let's hang out. I wanted to do a little day in the life video in the lab for a day, specifically what weekend work might look like. I am seven weeks from my newly scheduled defense date. Things are really crazy. I feel crazy. There's a lot to do. I wanted to do a lot this weekend to stay to my timeline, stay to my deadlines. So that means doing imaging on the weekend. Thought I'd take you guys along. Even though it's a beautiful day outside, it's finally sunny again. Gotta do what I gotta do. Just grind for a few more weeks. Finish up my paper. I don't think most people outside of this field would know what it looks like to spend a day in a dark room on a very expensive microscope. Thought I'd just give a little snippet and bring you along. I'll give you an overview of what weekend work is like in general. So PhD students and graduate researchers usually set their own schedule and some labs expect you to come in on weekends, but luckily not mine. I only do if my experiment timing falls that I have to or if I need to schedule time to use shared equipment like this microscope. The campus is pretty empty on weekends, but there's almost always someone in a lab somewhere. So this is the microscope room, or one of the rooms within the microscope facilities. And you can see on the left this big white and black thing, and then there's a computer attached with the program for imaging. I'm always alone and in the dark for this, so I listen to music to keep me going and sing if I'm alone. <laughs> Today we're listening to SZA. This microscope setup was probably around $250,000 plus maintenance, so it's at a core facility or a shared resource where multiple labs or researchers can rent time on the equipment and basically share the cost. So I'm using a confocal microscope, a type of microscope that allows you to take images of things in specific planes of view or depth levels, even through the inside layers of the specimen and this could be done at a high resolution, so really clear zoomed in images. In my case, I'm looking at a sample of skin with tumors. I'm using fluorescence imaging, so I took a piece of tumor skin and prepared it in a way that lets me identify specific proteins or types of cells in the skin tissue. The technique works by having antibodies that attach to whatever you wanna see and then those are visualized with other antibodies that have fluorescent proteins. So kind of like a glow in the dark object attached to it, where if you shine a specific laser on it, it's gonna light up and then we could see it in the microscope. Oh, and we keep the lights off so that it doesn't interfere with the signal in the image, which should be nothing but the fluorescent signal if we're in the dark. That's why you see all these pretty colors. So what am I doing today? I'm trying to take clear images that are pretty enough for publications that allow me to clearly see the layers of the skin and the skin tumors, as well as different types of immune cells in the skin so that I can understand if certain immune cells are behaving differently when the cancer is there. For the microscopy setup, I have a glass slide with the tissue specimen set up on the left where the microscope is and I'm viewing it through the camera that is showing a preview on the computer program on the right. I can adjust settings to make it look how I want and where I want it, but it takes me six to 20 minutes to take one big image after setting up, depending on how big of an area and how many layers of depth I'm imaging. And so you could see on the screen, I'm looking at the skin tissue I'm going through and looking at different depths to see where I can capture the fluorescent signal, so the different colors that are lighting up, depending on how deep I'm looking up and down in the tissue. And basically, I get the image of the tissue in focus until I can clearly see it, and I pick an area that I want to image. Then I adjust the settings to make the colors and the resolution look good and clear, 
and then I decide on the depth that I want to capture after going through it. Once it's all set up, I wait till it finishes imaging and then I make sure to save all of these large image files. When it's done imaging, in my case, I'm left with an image or big picture of a large area relatively of the skin tissue that I picked and so I can see across the area of the skin but also the depth at multiple layers and then I can combine these layers to either create a 3d image because I have three planes in this case or I can combine the signal so all the light from each of the layers and either add them up or see what the maximum signal I can get is and that will give me an idea of what all of the signal combined looks like from this little chunk that I chose to image in single planes but at multiple depths. And so it's a pretty cool technology because you can get really focused in and see structures inside of cells or more zoomed out at uh, total cells within a tissue area. I mostly like looking at the pretty colors and if I'm doing long imaging sessions like this, honestly sometimes I see the pretty colors when I close my eyes before bed. <laughs> While I wait for the imaging to finish, I usually plan experiments or analyze data. I always have a lot of images to do some sort of quantification, or the processing of analysis of the images also takes a while. For example, today I am quantifying tumor growth using images from a different technique. So similar samples of skin were processed in a different way. This is through H&E staining or hematoxylin and eosin staining. That leaves this pink and purple stain of basic structures in a tissue. Doctors use this often to quickly look at histology or histopathology. For example, taking a biopsy and seeing if a growth looks like it could be cancer. We image with the light microscope, so nothing fancy, but just zooming in and lighting it up. It's much faster and cheaper to get a look at your tissue or cells. I don't want to study specific cell types here and I don't need to see them at such a close level as in the confocal microscopy, but rather the overall tumors which are made of many cells. And so I can use this as a quick way to see how big tumors are and then I trace around them in the pictures to measure them. This manual quantification takes up a lot of time <laughs> but it's pretty mindless so i can do this while listening to podcasts or music there are ways you can try to automate this with a computer program but the biology of our tumors makes it a little difficult to get that working so lots of tracing and clicking on my computer <laughs> all right it's time to wrap up and shut down the microscope with shared and expensive equipment, they must be turned on and off properly. I clean my slides with eyeglass cleaner, save my files to a shared server, and I also clean the microscope's objective lens. And this is because I used oil with this particular objective, which is needed for certain lenses to get optimal resolution. I clean the microscope area for the next person. I shut down the program after everything's saved. And then I log out, shut down the computer. And typically at this point, you would check on a shared calendar or schedule if someone is gonna come in after you or in the near future, if it's a normal work day. But since no one is coming after me since it's the weekend, then I can turn off the microscope completely and shut it all down so that it's not running overnight. And there's a specific order to do this so the laser can cool. I usually do three to four hour sessions so I can get through many slides at once and five to six hour if I'm being ambitious on the weekends. <laughs> and things go faster when I'm in the groove and it takes a while to set up and shut down. There was definitely a learning curve to this, but I actually really enjoy it and enjoy teaching people to use this technique. And so I hope you enjoyed seeing how I use it in my research.
the last year before graduating is a lot so it's been a struggle to be motivated but i'm trying my best to push through done for the day well not really i'm gonna do some computer work at home or maybe on the couch maybe in the sun i haven't worked majority of weekends i usually try and keep them empty sometimes i'll do like computer work on the weekends but some people work every weekend some people work one day every weekend but right now like i said it's crunch time i'm trying to do at least one day i am gonna go take a food break cook and do some more analysis today thanks for joining along hope it was interesting and maybe informative let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys later. For more cozy work vibes, check out my study with me videos.